Now stay tuned to the following radio broadcast. You're listening to the Victory Station, AM 1360. We're glad you chose us. Thank you. It's Impact with the Florida Star, the largest, oldest, and most read African-American newspaper in Northeast Florida and South Georgia. And now, here's the host, the publisher of the award-winning Florida Star, Clara McLaughlin. This is OPO. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Impact. I am sitting in for Clara McLaughlin. We have a great show lined up for you today, as always. First, we have Ben Frazier of the SCLC. He's going to talk about the Vernell Bing case. Also, we have Mr. Robert Money. He has a lawsuit against the Volusia County Sheriff's Department. And we have comedian Foxy Gunn. She is on at the end of the show, so please stay tuned. You do not want to miss what we have going on for you today right here on Impact. This is Ophio, and I am speaking with no other than Mr. Ben Frazier. Many of you probably have seen him on TV, heard him on the radio, because this is a media guy. He is the communications director over at the SCLC right here in Jacksonville. How you doing, sir? I'm doing just fine. Thank you, first off, for allowing me to come on this program. Of course, I have some history in Jacksonville, Florida, OPO. A man by the name of Eric Simpson was an old friend of mine. Ah. And anyone in Jacksonville, Florida knows who Eric Simpson is and his tremendous role in local history as the original owner and editor of the Florida Star newspaper when I was cutting my eye teeth, as the saying goes, when I was knee-high to a duck, I met with Mr. Simpson and we talked about the role that race played in the fire department in Jacksonville and he gave me the impetus, the fire in the belly as a journalist to begin with. I give him that credit so that to do anything in conjunction with his famous history and the famous history of the Florida Star, I am indeed honored. Why do you do this? And, and how did you get into the the idea that media is the way to uh, push forward and in your adult life? And why black uh, as a um, as an area that you're into? Well, that's an interesting question that you ask. You have to understand the chronology of my history and my involvement in the media. I started out at WOBS, which used to be the black radio station in the days of old. I grew up also as an anchor person for the Mutual Black Network. And we started our coverage of the wars and uh, the liber- wars of liberation in Africa. And we always saw our roles as advocacy journalists. We never saw our simple role as just reporting the facts. We sought to tell you like it is and its impact on black people, whether it's in the third world or over here on this part in the States. So yes, I'm an advocacy journalist. I don't make any uh, pulling punches about it. I want to tell it like it is because so much of the media is not based on my experience. People who are alien to my culture attempt to interpret the facts the way they see it with their reference point. There's a need for the black perspective. There's a need for the black press, and I'm glad to be a part of it. Now, some people, maybe the younger people, will say, man, in the last several years, that's been this big police brutality issue. But there's been police brutality issue ever since the slave catcher days of the uh, 1800 and probably even before. Um, talk a little bit about um, the whole issue, particularly the current issue where we are dealing with around the country, police brutality and police abuse and uh, police murders. Well, we understand that it is the law enforcement uh, part of our society that's always enforced uh, slavery. 
I mean, you can take it back to 1820 and the Missouri Compromise, or you can take it back to the Fugitive Slave Act of 1850, when they went from the South to the North to bring back anybody who had succeeded in escaping. You can talk about uh, the brutality that we experienced from the Civil War up into the First World, World War, when, of course, we dealt with Reconstruction and the greatest lynching uh, that ever happened in this country, the lynchings that took place, the white riots that took place, uh, the destruction of Black Wall Street. You understand that police brutality is nothing new and that police have always been a part of enforcing that culture. The problem that we refuse to grasp, the problem that we want to uh, attempt to sweep under the rug, the problem that we want to build wars, walls about to, to stop people from coming over here, is, is that one word called racism. We're talking about uh, racial animus. We're talking about that feeling of animosity, that feeling of ill will, that intense dislike, that hatred that people have based on the color of a person's skin and not the content of a person's character. We have to be real. We must accept and stare straight in the eyes, grab the bull by the horns, and shake hands with the fact that racism is probably the single most important feature of contemporary American politics. Now, we know that other things are involved. Class and gender and religion and political views, even regions. But if we want to understand what I would suggest to be the broad contours of American politics today, you can't do it unless you provide us and move in the direction of an honest examination of race. Now, let's talk about law enforcement in the black community. It didn't start with Trayvon Martin. It didn't start with uh, Mike in Ferguson. Uh, it started long before then. But since then, we've seen so many of these ugly sorted examples of man's inhumanity to man go down in cities across America right here in our own hometown. Mm -hmm. Now, speaking of our own hometown, there was a Vernell Bing shooting that ended up happening. Um, they say it was a car chase. Uh, the eyewitness say the guy got out of the car. He was going limping away from the police officer uh, Landreville when he was shot in the head. Uh, talk about uh, that whole case and uh, the SCLC's involvement in it. Well, certainly, there have been many other cases that the involvement of police and police shootings have in fact been questionable in this town, our town, Jacksonville, Florida. It didn't start with Vernell Bing. There are other names that we could mention, but let's focus on Bing here. Here we are, 100 days after his burial over in Rest Lawn, and uh, they still haven't given us any honest answers. We're still waiting patiently 100 days later. So the question we ask is, why did that white JSO police officer, Tyler Landerville, unholster his gun as Vernell Bing Jr., age 22, after a 3.5 mile chase, limp away from him? unarmed and disoriented. Why did that police officer pull his weapon, endangering not only Mr. Bing Jr.'s life, but the lives of other people who were around? Why did they do that on May 22nd, 2016 at night and liberty? Three months later, OPO, we're still waiting on State Attorney 
Angela Corey. I call her Miss Ann. And we're still waiting on Sir Mike Williams and Lenny Curry, the mayor. I call them the Gang of Three. Massa Massa and Miss Ann. Why are we still waiting for them to show real leadership? Why are we still waiting? They should step forth boldly. The same people who are espousing that this is just one Jacksonville. We're all the same. Why are they standing back, not coming forward with the truth? We as a community, the black folks and the white folks, we want the truth with regard to the Bing investigation. It's not just the black thing. It's a truth thing. What we want is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Now they say Landerville has put a statement out, but we have not seen that statement. Why haven't we seen that statement yet? You haven't seen that statement because of the FOP. You remember the FOP? Mm -hmm. These guys are all members, literally, of the same lodge, the Fraternal Order of Police. They're the ones who do the investigating. They investigate each other. They investigated the Bing murder. And that's what it was. It was an execution. They investigate themselves. My God, these are the same people. They barbecue together. They drink beers at the same places. They hang out. They tell the same jokes. And they investigate themselves. Now, the sheriff who want to go to barbershops and laugh and joke with black folks, wants us to believe that he can investigate, they can investigate themselves. I tell you that that is something akin to the fox guarding the hen house. So I think that there should be an independent third-party investigation by the FDLE. Any time a Jacksonville Sheriff's Officer fires a weapon in Duval County. It ought to be investigated by an outside authority. Now, will the FDLE come up with anything different than JSO? Huh? Probably not. But regardless, we are sick and tired of the same results coming from these investigations, these internal investigations that are undoubtedly always thankless, undoubtedly always, uh, we, we can say that they're, they're contradictory all the time, and they're controversial all the time. You're not going to, nobody believes these investigations. Why is the sheriff still doing it? He needs to sign a memorandum of understanding. Sign it with the FDLE and allow them to investigate anything, anytime these guys uh, shoot a weapon in New Orleans County. That's my feeling. So, what do you believe can be some remedies when we're looking at these police shootings? Because you mentioned the uh, independent investigation. Do we need independent prosecutors? Do we need uh, civilian review? Do we need cameras? Uh, what are some of the things that you believe that we need in order to remedy well, One of the main things we need is obviously body cameras. Now the sheriff says, after being against it in the beginning, then saying he couldn't find the money for it. Now he says he found the money for it. But now here's a sneaky little thing that they're doing right now, OBO. They're developing body cam policy, but they're doing it without any community input. Hmm. A coalition of more than 100 civil rights organizations have put together the principles by which local municipality, uh, counties, sheriffs, departments, police departments should put together policy. Otherwise, these cameras can end up being used against the same people we want them to put in place and deployed for to protect. Mm -hmm. This is Opion speaking with Mr. Ben Frazier of the SCLC. Man, I, I really want to thank you for coming on. Tell people how they can get in contact with you. They want to join the SCLC. They want to come to the meetings. They want to stand out and fight with the SCLC. What can they well, do? Anything you need to do, contact me right through my email address, Ben Frazier 
985 at yahoo.com. That's Ben Frazier, 985 at yahoo.com. We need your help. We need to end our craft pot mentality and unify. The community must be unified. We must work harder at working together. All right, Mr. Ben Frazier, thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Do you know what media received the first Eagle Award by the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office for being the most factual? The The Florida Florida Star. Star. Do you know which media solely addresses issues of concern for African Americans? The Florida Star. Do you know which media carries local, state, national, and international news regarding African Americans? The The Florida Florida Star. Star. Do you know the only media that carries a special section for our youth at home and the schedule for three black television networks? Now you know the Florida Star, Northeast Florida's largest, oldest, and most read African-American newspaper, serving since 1951 in more than 200 locations. The Florida Star, news you can use, news you can trust, the people's choice, striving to make a difference. Subscribe today. Call 766-8834. That's 766-8834. Pick up the Florida Star at over 200 locations, or to have it delivered, call 766-8834. Florida Star, speaking truth to power. This is Opio, and I am speaking with Robert Money uh, of Port Orange. She's in Volusia County, and he has an issue uh, with a Sheriff Ben Johnson. Uh, Mr. Money, how are you? I'm doing okay. I'm considering, you know. Well, tell us a little bit about what's going on over in Volusia County with the Sheriff. Well, I'm going to start with where the point where I'm at now. I had to go to to the extreme uh, uh, situation of, of filing a federal civil suit against Volusia County. It may be precedent setting. Every attorney told me you can't sue uh, police for not doing their job. And I said, yeah, but why not? I'm paying them, and it's, it's fraud. When, when you're paying, you're not getting services rendered. That's fraud, and involves uh, him not uh, enforcing cocaine uh, trafficking. And, okay, uh, so this is... That this is Sheriff uh, Ben Johnson. He's been a sheriff for like 16 years. He rose up through the ranks, became a SWAT guide, and ultimately um, they run for election, and he's been winning ever since, and now he's retiring. Um, it looks like uh, the sheriff has uh, also had an issue some while back of people that were stealing money or, or uh, stealing uh, evidence uh, out of uh, the uh, evidence room there, cocaine, it seemed like that happened. Uh, it seemed like in his past, he uh, shot somebody when he was a police officer. But in your case, there was some drug dealing going on that uh, really hindered your business. You tried to contact him a number of times, and he would not uh, even speak with you. Uh, they uh, wrote a story about this where they're saying that... Um, uh, he did pay attention to what was going on there, but you feel that he did not do enough or he did not do his job at all? Well, what happened is um, these guys immediately from the beginning told me they didn't like outsiders. Uh, I bought this property and they had the perfect setup for cocaine distribution, you know, and I, they didn't want anybody in here. And they told me flat out from the beginning they were connected to the sheriff and this area doesn't like outsiders, and I didn't believe it. I left it alone until I, you know, I finally found the proof that they had sabotaged my truck. I don't go around accusing until I get the evidence, and it took me two years when I took my truck apart to find out what they did to it. So what do you want the final outcome of all this to be? Okay, well, what I want is I want this network to be exposed, which is already happening, okay, because uh, he got taken out. Not only did he get taken out, but his chief deputy, um... Bobby Jones, who was indicted in in the 80s or 90s, where they were interdicting black people coming up out of South Florida. You'll see this if you do a Google search. It's uh, Sheriff Vogel's tenure. And uh, they were were picking out black uh, motorists coming up out of South Florida and and shaking them down for drugs and money. And uh, Bobby Jones and Mike uh, Coffin, these are the same characters that have been around since, you know, since the last scandal. And, uh, you know, they find these vehicles with briefcases and suitcases full of coke and money. And, you know, the lure of easy money, you know, um, they're, they're human beings and they got kids that put through college and all. And if they can get away with it, like I told the Fed, that, you know, if you enable and allow the situation to, to happen, they're going to do it. And um, the way these guys are so insulated, 
that um, they've been doing it for so long, they became arrogant. And so I, part of my lawsuit is is um, intentional infliction of emotional harm. And, you know, I'm asking for $10 million. I really appreciate it. And we're going to be following this. This is Mr. Robert Money of Port Orange. This is in Volusia County, which also includes Daytona Beach as well as DeLand. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. This is Opio, and I am speaking with Foxy Gunn. This is Sheila. She is a comedian. How you doing, Sheila? Hi, great. How you doing, Opio? Thank you for the opportunity. All right. Hey, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. How did you get into comedy? I got into comedy um, because I was doing a lot of volunteer work at uh, a lot of women's shelters, a, a domestic violence facilities, and I was just like trying to tell people to laugh through the pain. Whatever situation that you're going through, you can make light of it. So I just started to do it that way, just a woman's empowerment thing, to laugh about various situations that you're going through. Instead of being consumed about the bad things, laugh about it. Laugh about the situation, and laughter gives you longevity. So that's how I got started. Tell us what's your style. What's your style of comedy? If you had to say that there was somebody out there that was uh, kind of like you or that you mimicked or that you saw and say, ah, uh, this uh, is, is, would be similar to my style, who would that be? Um, I think I'm a combo meal. I'm totally not like just any one person. Some people have uh, said my style and my appearance looks like some organ. Someone said I kind of would do like Monique, but my, my style of comedy is clean comedy. I don't do a lot of uh, cursing, very little profanity. I don't talk about a lot of, I talk about issues, current events, relationships, things that might affect women, things that might affect men in our community. So I just talk about mostly events and I just make light of it. But I'm trying to inform people about what's going on in their life and just laughing about this stuff and actually making people think about what's going on. So that's the type of comedy. It's, it's informational comedy, but I also have a twist in it because I'm make you think as well as laugh about the situation. What? How did you know you were a comic? A comic? Actually, to be honest, my entire family is funny. My entire family is funny, and um, and a lot of people would say you're very funny. Even when I was, um, you know, I had a spat with the illness, and then I would go to the my daughter's apartment, I would laugh and joke, and um, and I just decided, hey, just go ahead and share it, and get on stage. I started doing some open mics, and I was very successful with that. I had people to invite me to different venues. Just did a competition in St. Augustine. Uh, turned out really well. And um, I just realized that, hey, um, I did motivational speaking, and I trickled down from motivational speaking to doing uh, comedy. So it's a combo meal. I motivate you with a, with, with a real dab of laughter. Now, tell me some of the comedians out there that you admired growing up. I want to tell you who I really admired coming up and I thought it was kind of funny. I, I liked, like, the older comedians. I like Fred Sanford. I like Esther. I thought she was very funny to me. Um, I, I kind of, well, my favorite comedian of all time is Bernie Mac. Because he, he always made me laugh, and I, I still, uh, if I'm at work or if I'm at home, I still YouTube Bernie Mac, and he always made me laugh. Because you know what? He was always sober when he did his shows. He didn't have to have a drink. He didn't have to do anything. And he did like I do. We talk about our family. We talk about real life. And we just make people think, because if your life is funny, you can let, let that trickle down into your comedy. So... Of all time, I think Bernie Mac is one of my favorites ever. And I'm a female comedian, but I try to mimic more Bernie Mac style. Hmm. Now, uh, is it your idea that comedians are really getting some shine now as a result of uh, cable TV, as a result of YouTube, or do you feel like the comedians are still not getting there just due to the, the little people that are coming up? I truly believe comedians are coming out. It's so many comedians on YouTube. Even on my Facebook page, there are thousands of comedians. But you just have to be a little different to stand out. And like with Bounce TV, they have like various shows. 
various comedy shows. And just look at the Kevin Hart. That was like awesome. He was a rock. He's a rock star among comedians. They have larger venues now. Back, you know, we would never think of comedians being able to set, to sell out Veterans Memorial uh, or the Convention Center. You know, com comedians are packing the house that way because you know people want to laugh. You know, they we're performers now, and people want to laugh. They want to think. They want to forget about the day they had. They want to laugh about mm -hmm. things. So right now, it's an era for comedians. We're rising up, and a lot of comedians are, are acting, doing a lot of movies. So it's an awesome way to get your put yourself out there and to be in the limelight. So my answer is that comedians, a lot of us, and it's and more than you would think about in the past. In the past, they would be like little small clubs, little small venues, but now they're blowing up. They're selling out larger, larger venues because people are actually more wanting to laugh more and they're trying to get out there. So it's an awesome thing. Is there a uh some topics that you feel that just off limits to you or should be off limits to comedians? I'm, I'm not one of those comedians who talks about, um, straight out blatantly talks about politics. I don't really talk about politics and I don't talk about religion. I don't bash anyone. Religion, politics, their gender or sexual preference, those are some those are some topics that I don't give a dab into because I think those are sensitive topics, you know, so I don't, those are things, politics, gender, sexual preference, religion, those are some items that I would probably never, ever get on stage and talk about. Now, there are uh, comedians that... Uh, church people like, and they can perform at churches. <laughs> and uh, are you one of those types of comedians? Because, and I'm asking that because I heard that Bernie Mac first got his start at a funeral. I think as uh, some family member died, and they say Bernie Mac got up there and began talking, and the whole church went crazy. And when he was younger, and ultimately, I think that led him into the world of comedy. Uh, is, are you a type of person that a church can bring in? and you can make a church laugh without offending anybody? I'm sure. Yes, I have. I have some stuff that, that you know, I, I have some stuff that I actually can do at a church event that's clean and it's, it's hilarious. We can talk about things that are going on in the church. Like the, the modern day church and they're like open, they're more open to laugh about things rather than, you know, not discussing issues or things that are going on in the church. And I think, yeah, I think I would be open to do uh, maybe churches or religious events because I'm not going to bash anyone's religion. I'm going to talk about the various things that they do within those. Uh, so, yeah, I think uh, that would be a good venue for me as well. Um, I, I actually have done a couple of religious venues. It was like non-traditional, you know, so I have a little experience with that. So it's, it's, it was awesome. This is Opie on speaking to comedian Foxy Gunn. She's an awesome, awesome sister. Uh, tell people how they can get in contact with you if they wanted to see you. Do you have any dates uh, set up where you're going to be on stage? I'm going to be at uh, my next venue. It's going to be the Comedy Club on Beach. And it's going to be an awesome event. They do have it happy hour. Um, it's going to be on Thursday, September 15th, show starts at 7.30 p.m., and um, that's going to be my next event in Jacksonville, but you can also hit me up on Facebook, I have a Foxy Gun, the Comedian Facebook page, um, You can, uh, and I'm open to birthday parties, any sort of being, any, any kind of event that you might have, uh, just, I normally do a lot of uh, events with uh, women's organizations, but I'm open to any organization, but you can ask if you want to just, I will be on YouTube in the next couple of weeks, so you can reach me on YouTube as well. All right, uh, Sheila, I really appreciate it, y'all. You have to reach out to her. You have to check her out. Uh, she has a great personality. As a matter of fact, she cares about social issues. That's how I know her. Foxy Gunn, thank you, sister. My pleasure. Thank you for the opportunity. And you're awesome. Have a great day. This is Opio. Thank you for tuning in to Impact.